Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day and thanks so much for joining me for another art video. Throughout the past few weeks, I've been receiving a few different questions on mixing greens with watercolor how to create greens that are more natural looking and also color mixtures that will just look more interesting and add more life and dimension into landscapes and trees and natural organic elements. So what I'm gonna be sharing in this video using my very non-type A method of exploring different color mixtures and swatching is I'm gonna be sharing the two main methods that I use to create lively looking greens. With the first method, I'm going to show you how I use ready-made greens straight out of my watercolor set and then add in yellow and blue to them to create alternate versions of that green. And with the second method, I'm gonna show you how I use the two primaries that create green, so blue and yellow, to create my green. Along with those two strategies, I'm gonna be sharing three things that you can do, colors that you can add into your greens to mute them out even more if you wish to. And in the last part of this video, I'm gonna be sharing how I would go about painting a tree so that you can actually see all of these ideas in a practical sense. I'm gonna be leaving timestamps for the different parts of this video down below in the description box in case you'd like to jump to a specific part. And with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right in. The paint that you're gonna be seeing me use today is all from my St. Petersburg White Knights Full Pan paint set. And I really want to encourage you to use whatever watercolor set it is that you have. Get used to exploring your own color mixtures and don't be afraid of just testing color mixtures out to see what, what's the result. So the first thing that I am doing is I am removing the five different greens that come in this watercolor set. And for all of these exercises, including the tree that I'm gonna be painting at the end, all I'm gonna be using is one size six round brush. All right, so now, however many greens it is that you have available, whether it's one, two, three, or more, let's go ahead and swatch these out. The greens that I have available in this set are this green that St. Petersburg just names as green. I also have a light green. I have an emerald green. I have a chromium oxide green and I have an olive green. I'm making sure to completely rinse out the previous green for my paintbrush bristles as I move on to grabbing the next green. So if you're doing this along with me, make sure to completely rinse out that previous color from your bristles. Otherwise the color is going to get contaminated. Now, one of the common struggles and concerns that I hear from lots of beginners getting started with watercolor is how unnatural and stark looking greens are straight out of the tube or pen. Now, if you see these five greens that I have available, some of them are definitely, definitely more quote unquote natural looking than others. For me, I can tell you that the ones in the upper right, both the light green and the emerald green, are the ones that look most unnatural to me right out of the pan. The emerald green especially, it is very blue biased, it is cool in temperature, and the light green is as well. The others are warmer. Usually the greens that have a lot of blue in them, such as phthalo green and also viridian green, they're not gonna be very natural looking. This does not mean that those greens are just not handy for landscapes and things like that. It just means that you have to learn about color mixing and mix colors into them to make them look more natural. But you can definitely achieve awesome looking greens with those more bluish greens. However, for me personally, I do tend to gravitate towards the warmer greens right off the bat. This is totally a taste thing though, and it has to do with how I personally like working. All this said, whatever green it is that you decide to go for, if you're using a ready-made base green for your painting, you're going to have to bring in other colors to create alternate versions of your green, to create a wide variety of green hues, especially if you're looking to develop some amount of realism in your work. Because in real life, nothing around us is just one flat color. Even if I chose 
any of the more natural looking greens that I have here if I just used one green and that's it to paint in a tree or grass areas or plants or whatever it is that plant or that grass area or that tree is gonna look very flat very stark looking very unnatural and of course if I have not even developed any amount of water control and I cannot even um, make different values using just one same color which we can do when painting with this medium it's gonna look heavy and that is number one that I always always recommend to any beginner getting started with this medium before even getting into color mixing make sure that you've developed some amount of water control at least that you're able to create a wide variety of different values using only one single color by just adding more or less water to your color mixtures because what you have to understand if you're just getting started with watercolor is that when we're working with this medium yes we're creating lighter and darker version and more muted out versions of different colors by adding in different colors into those mixtures but we're also really using the medium's translucency to our advantage to create a wide variety of values and an interesting use of color and to add dimension to our pieces when we're painting with watercolor along the way it's a very fluid process we're constantly adding more color into our color mix Mixtures, but we're also shifting and changing the amount of water to paint ratios depending on what it is that we're doing so we need to know how to do both things control the amount of water in our color mixtures in our paintbrush and also be aware of how wet our paper is as we're painting but we also have to become adept at color mixing and just as an example here are two little tree studies that I created using a base green so the green that I used as a base for these two trees is a sap green and I added in some Indian yellow to create a lighter version of it and I added in some indigo to create a darker version and what I want you to notice about these tree studies is that I have very light green areas in both trees I have a wide range of midtones in both trees and I also have areas of very dark looking greens which I did my best to add into cast shadow areas beneath or between the different groupings of leaves however I also have areas in which I use my lighter green my medium greens and my darker greens to different translucencies I have some areas in which the paint is more translucent or transparent and other areas in which that paint is more saturated okay so at the end of this video as I said before I'm gonna be walking you through my process for painting one of these trees but for now I'm gonna be moving on to explain the first method that I use to create a variety of greens for whatever it is that I'm gonna be painting and this method is going to be using a base green a ready-made green straight out of my set so the green that I'm gonna be choosing for this first method demo is this green in the upper left corner you can feel free to use whichever ready-made green it is that you like most even if it's a bluer green and if you have more time to create these explorations and swatches I would even encourage you to try doing this with all of your greens it's super powerful to see what different results your different greens allow and you're gonna be able to find out which mixtures you like best all right so let's go ahead and get started with exploring using a ready-made green as a base and then what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be choosing two different blues and two different yellows from this watercolor set I already have my ready-made green that I chose right here on my palette and what I'm doing right now is I am taking out my two yellows and my two blues that I'm going to be using for my two yellows I chose cadmium lemon and cadmium yellow medium and for my two blues I chose ultramarine blue and indigo which is a very deep rich blue if you're a little bit more advanced you may want to choose a warm yellow and a cool yellow and a warm blue and a cool blue so that you can see how different color temperatures affect your end results 
However, because I want to keep this tutorial beginner friendly, I don't want to jump into color temperature just yet. So just choose two different yellows and two different blues. All right, so here is my little setup that I created for myself in one of these pages from this little watercolor sketchbook. I changed my water so that I can make sure that I am working with clean water here. And just like what I was doing before, I'm gonna make sure to completely rinse out those paintbrush bristles as I am creating these different color mixtures. So whenever you see that your water starts getting way too murky, go ahead and change it. And in between the colors that you're creating, you also wanna make sure that you're rinsing out your paintbrush bristles accordingly. You also wanna make sure that you are kind of in control of your different color mixtures on your paint mixing palette because you definitely don't want your different color mixers to start intermixing because if that happens, then your swatches are not really gonna be uh, true to the colors that you are testing out. So use this as an opportunity as well to continue developing your water control and how you manage your different color mixtures and everything like that. Okay, so right there at the top, I just got started with swatching out my base green once again. That's just the plain green with nothing in it. And what you're seeing me do right here using my size six round brush is I am creating my different color mixtures. This one right here at the top is my base green plus my cadmium lemon. You can see how nice and bright that color mix came out. And then this next one is the base green plus the cadmium yellow medium. And this one has more of a warmer kind of look to it because that yellow that I mixed into the green was very warm, whereas the cadmium lemon is a cool yellow. I am now moving on to swatching out my base green plus my two blues. So right here I am creating my little color mixer with my base green and the ultramarine. And there you go, you can see how deep and dark that green turned out by mixing in some ultramarine blue into it. And now I'm gonna be adding in some indigo into that base green. Indigo, as I said, is a super, super dark, rich, deep blue. So this green turned out even deeper and darker than the green that I created with the ultramarine blue. So you can see that by adding in my yellow, whichever yellow it is, you are going to be able to lighten your base green, especially if the base green that you choose is already pretty dark. It's kind of a mid-tone to dark green because if for your base green you already choose a very light bright looking green such as let's just say for me the olive green that I had an option to choose with this set then most likely than not you don't have to even create or bother with creating a lighter green color mixture because that is already your lightest green. You would just have to create darker green color mixtures using that same base green so that you can ensure that you're able to develop a wide range of values throughout whatever it is that you're gonna be painting. And the very last thing that I wanted to point out before moving on to the next thing is that I personally would never use two ready-made greens in the same painting. I would choose one and then create alternate versions of that same green. And this is because I'm a huge believer in not bringing in more colors mindlessly if they're not really needed. At the end, what I have found is that if I limit the amount of colors that I use for a painting, and repeat the same color in different color mixtures, at the end, my painting looks a lot more harmonious and cohesive versus just bringing in more and more colors mindlessly. It's not that using two ready-made greens in the same painting is wrong or anything like that, it's just what I personally like doing. Okay, so right here you can see how I've managed to create two different light greens and two different dark greens. What I would do if I were going to be moving on to a landscape painting or something like that would be to choose the yellow that I preferred and the blue that I preferred and now I know that I'm all set to create my wide variety of different greens and different green values. All right, so before moving on to method number two for creating a variety of greens, I am going to be showing you three different ways that you can mute out your greens. So even though we have a base green that we're gonna be using, we have our lighter green color mixer and a darker green color mixer, these greens can still look a little bit too bright or too unnatural. 
And especially when we are painting something that is meant to look more realistic, colors around us in real life, 99% of them are desaturated. They're kind of muted. And so if your thing is to use colors that are more desaturated, more natural looking, then here are three options that you can use. I'm going to show you how you can use greens complementary, which is red, to mute it out. I'm also going to show you how to use a brown or a neutral to mute it out. And I'm also going to show you how to use a gray just because I really don't use ready-made blacks because they tend to dull out a painting. So this gray that I'm going to use to demo this uh, muting out technique is Payne's gray. If you're interested in knowing exactly what red and what brown I am using for my red, I am going to be using Matter Lake Red Light. And for my brown, I'm going to be using Burnt Umber. Okay, so let's get started with adding in a bit of the colors complementary. So as I said, red is complementary or opposite to green in the color wheel. Colors that are complementary to each other are going to mute each other out, whether it's purple and yellow or blue and orange or red and green or whatever it is. And you really just have to add in a tiny bit of its complementary because if you add way too much, you're probably going to notice that you're going to create a brown or even very dark gray looking color mixture. And you may have to spend a little bit of time shifting those color ratios in your color mixture on your color mixing palette until you arrive at a muted out green. And this is totally normal because depending on the color that you chose, some colors are way deeper, way more kind of potent than others, okay? And so I cannot give you a very specific percentage of each color because it's totally going to depend on the specific colors that you chose. Okay, so right here, I am just choosing one of my lighter green color mixtures. I chose my base green plus cadmium yellow medium color mixture to just add a little bit of red into that and swatch it out so that I can show you what happens. And you can really choose whichever of your green color mixtures you'd like to add the red to. There's really no rhyme or reason why I chose this particular one right here. And once I have a nice juicy color mixture right there on my color mixing palette that looks like a dark green to me, I go ahead and swatch it out and you're gonna notice that it looks a lot darker and a lot more muted. It's not necessarily darker in value than the greens that I created with the blue right above this one, but it is more muted out. It's desaturated. It's kind of grayed or browned out because I added the colors complementary. All right, so let's move on to strategy number two for muting out your green. And for this one, I chose the base green plus ultramarine blue color mixture for no reason, just because. And what I'm gonna be doing for this one is I'm gonna be adding in some brown. And you're gonna notice that this also leads to a muted out green. Why? Because brown is a neutral color. Brown is already in and of itself a mixture of different primaries. And so by adding in a neutral color into any of your ready-made colors straight out of the pan or tube, you're gonna mute them down. All right, and finally, the last strategy is adding in a bit of gray into your green color mixture. This is also going to lead to a muted down green look. The green color mixer that I chose for that last swatch was my cadmium lemon plus my base green and I just added in a little bit of that Payne's gray. You could also use something like a neutral tint for this or even a ready-made black, though as I said, I prefer not to use ready-made blacks. All right, so there you go. There are three different ways that you can mute out your greens if that's what you want to do, if you want to make your greens even more realistic three different strategies. Right here you can see them close up. You can see how all of these strategies work to mute out those greens. 
You can add in a little bit of the complementary to green. You can add in a little bit of a brown and it doesn't even have to be a dark brown. It can be a medium brown, like a burnt sienna and even a raw sienna, which is a light kind of beige neutral color is gonna mute out a green if you add it to green. And finally, there's the gray option. So here are a whole bunch of different things that you can do to create your wide variety of different green hues and also different green values for your next painting. Sometimes I just use my base green, a yellow and a blue. And other times if I want to create my darker values by just adding in the complementary or a brown or a gray into my base green, I can get away with not even using a blue at all. One last little suggestion is exploring mixing different purples into base greens. I've been able to create some very beautiful dark rich green color mixtures by adding some purple into them. All right, for now, let's move on to method number two for creating a variety of different greens. For this method, instead of using a ready-made base green, we're gonna be creating our own green color mixture by mixing together the two primaries that create green, which are yellow and blue. I'm gonna be using the exact same yellows, the exact same blues, and I'm gonna be bringing in the same red, the same brown, and the same gray to demo this method. First, I'm gonna be creating a mixture of my cadmium lemon plus my ultramarine blue right here in this well on my color mixing palette. You can see how I cleaned out my color mixing palette before getting started with this demo for the second method because I wanted to make sure to start out with nice clean wells. With my green color mixture ready, I am going to swatch it out for you right here and you're gonna see how it is very bright. It is quite unnatural looking. And this is probably because of the cadmium lemon. Now I'm gonna be moving on to mixing together my cadmium lemon plus my indigo. Because the indigo is a very deep, rich blue, it is going to lead to a darker look than the previous one, which had the ultramarine blue. Moving on to creating my cadmium yellow medium plus ultramarine blue color mixture. I spent a little bit longer creating this color mixture until it looked green to me on my color mixing palette. And last but not least, I'm gonna be mixing together my cadmium yellow medium plus my indigo. And I really like this green that turned out. You can see how this one turned out lighter than the last two but more natural looking for sure than the first one. All right, there are a few things that I wanna point out before moving on to the next thing. And the first note that I wanna point out here is that in my case, that first color mixture, the cadmium lemon plus the ultramarine blue, is what I would consider to be the most unnatural looking. And at the same time, it's the most bluish of all the coolest green that I've created. The other color mixers that I've created turned out way warmer than that first mixture. And the other thing that I wanna point out before moving on is that aside from that first color mixer that I created, the other three are pretty muted and at least to me they look a lot more natural, which is not something that happened as easily when I just used the colors straight out of my pan with the first method. Now, the results of your different greens, of course, are really going to depend on the primary yellow and the primary blue that you choose to mix together because there are so many different yellows and so many different blues. Things that affect the results are things like the temperature of the yellow and the blue that you choose, the richness or darkness that the yellow and the blue have, how opaque they are, etc. However, if you are able to arrive at a relatively mid-tone green that's natural looking by just mixing two primaries together, then really you just need those two primaries and you're gonna be able to create a wide variety of green hues just with those two primaries. Because if you add more yellow into your color mixture, you're gonna create a lighter green. And if you add more blue to your color mixture, you're gonna create a darker green. And if you're already happy with how quote unquote natural that green looks, 
then you're all set. You're going to be able to create your wide variety of greens with just those two primaries and you don't even have to move on to muting them out with the strategies with adding in the red, the brown, or the gray. However, I do want to complete this demo for the second method by doing the exact same thing that I did with the first, which is adding in the red, which is complementary to green in the color wheel, which is going to mute it out further. So again, I am using Matter Lake Red Light for my red, and I am adding it into really just randomly, I chose the second green color mixture, which was my cadmium lemon plus my indigo. And you can see how I arrived at a very dark color mixture. It looks almost like a brownish grayish color, which makes sense because essentially I am mixing the three primary colors together, which creates a very dark brownish desaturated color. But if you want it to look more like a dark green, you can continue shifting and changing the ratios of these three colors in your color mixture so that it looks more like a dark green. All right, so for the second strategy for muting out greens even further, if this is what you want, <laughs> I am going to be using the first green color mixer that I created for the second demo, which is my cadmium lemon plus my ultramarine blue. And all I did was I added a little bit of my dark brown, which I am using burnt umber for this demo. You can see how I arrived at a very dark muted down green. All right, and finally, I'm sharing the third little strategy for muting out greens even further, and this one is by adding in a gray. So I am using Payne's gray, you can use neutral tint, and I've added that into my third green color mixture, which was my ultramarine blue plus the cadmium yellow medium. So there's another very deep, rich green that you can use to paint in dark value areas, in cast shadow areas between groupings of different leaves or beneath your trees. Okay, so those are my two methods for mixing greens for paintings. Now, here are these two sheets side by side with all of my different swatches. And right off the bat, with these different colors that I've selected for myself for these color mixtures, you can see how my sheet in which I show method number two Overall, I have more desaturated, more muted out colors when compared to the very vibrant greens in my first sheet for method number one. You can see the wide array of different greens that I've created for myself from cooler greens to warmer greens to lighter greens to darker greens to brighter greens and more vibrant greens to desaturated greens. And I just wanna finish up this portion of the video by saying that neither method nor any other method for creating your wide variety of greens is right or wrong or better or worse. It's really up to you to finding your own way of creating your greens and what, what's gonna personally work for you and the results that you wanna create. Because as I was saying in the beginning of this video, what's important if you're looking for something that looks more believable or at least mid to higher levels of realism, you need to focus on developing a wide range of values and translucencies throughout whatever it is that you're painting so that you can actually give the different elements in your piece dimension, light, and a sensation of depth. All right, and just to finish up this video, I'm gonna show you how I use method number one to paint a tree. So what I am doing right here is I am preparing three different green color mixers for myself, a lighter green by mixing together my cadmium lemon and my green, a medium green by just preparing some plain green with water in it, and then a darker green by mixing together green plus indigo. And then right here in the wells on the right, I am preparing some pure raw sienna for me with a little bit of water and some pure burnt umber with a little bit of water. All of these color mixtures are nice and juicy. They have a good amount of color in them, but also a bit of water in them. Using my size six round brush, I am going to loosely start by painting in the leaves of this tree on dry paper. So I'm not pre-wetting anything. 
And what I am doing right here is I am using a combo of scribbling with pressing down my paintbrush to different degrees and shifting and changing the angles as I went in order to create irregular abstract looking shapes. At times I'm barely touching just the tip of my paintbrush to my paper especially along the outer edges of the tree where I want to describe those irregular edges created by those leaves. Almost always when I'm painting with watercolor, I like getting started with the lightest color of the group that I have prepared for myself for the element or area on hand. So in this case, I got started with that grouping of leaves in the upper left corner and that light green created by my green plus lemon yellow and with that very irregular shape still wet with my lightest green I dropped in some of my medium green to darken certain sections within that and then finally on top of the medium green sometimes I drop in some of my darkest green that has the indigo in it but the darker and darker I get with my greens the less amount of that darker color I add in because I wanna make sure that I'm only dropping in the darkest green in sections where I really wanna create an illusion of cast shadow between the groupings of leaves. For me, when I am painting natural elements like trees and plants, it's important to move fast and to embrace the irregularity that is going on, to just trust in the movement of my hand and my arm. And whatever shape happens, happens. Otherwise, if I think about it too much or work too slow, that is a surefire way of arriving at something that looks very stiff and way too patterny. And I would recommend bringing the trees that you have seen to mind. And also, if you're painting or drawing a specific type of tree, then definitely try to look for references of that specific type of tree so that you can get an idea for the natural shape created by the leaves overall, but also have an idea of how the different leaves are grouping together so that you can have a better idea of where to develop those darker values. Something that I always make sure to do is to leave little white sections of paper shining through completely unpainted. These little white sections of paper help separate the different groupings of uh, leaves, but also when we're seeing a tree in real life, we, there are always certain sections where you can see through the leaves and into the background behind the tree. And even though today I'm not really adding this tree into any sort of landscape or I didn't create a background for it, I would be able to see the sky or whatever is behind the tree. Right here, certain sections are already starting to dry. So I am going in to add a little bit of detail. You can see me add a little bit more texture and the illusion of a few little individual leaves here and there with a bit of a darker value right on top of the shapes that I've already painted in. Okay, so right here, I am going to be moving on to removing all of the green from my paintbrush bristles. And I'm gonna be using my raw sienna to start painting in the initial lightest brown in the tree trunk and branches. You can see how I'm using different brush strokes to paint in the tree trunk. I'm using more vertical strokes and I'm leaving teeny tiny sections of white paper shining through so that in the strokes in combination with the little sections of paper shining through are going to help me describe the illusion or the texture of that wood. And with my initial lightest brown in there still wet, I dropped in a little bit of my darker brown, which is the pure burnt umber. And then I added in a little bit of indigo into that dark brown, which deepened that brown even more. And I'm only dropping in a tiny bit of this darkest brown into cast shadow sections on the leaves and just teeny tiny bits in the trunk. Finally, I removed all of the brown from my paintbrush bristles and I'm gonna be moving on to painting in a little bit of an illusion of grass right under the tree. So you can see how I started once again with my lightest green and then I went in to drop in some of my medium green in certain sections that I wanted to darken more. And finally, I move on to deepening and darkening some leaf sections closest to the base of the tree. 
almost always watercolor is going to dry lighter than how it looks when it's wet. So sometimes I like going back in after everything has dried and adding in a tiny bit of detail as well as darkening final darkest dark areas. But I still want to make sure that I don't overdo it because it's very easy to end up with something that looks overworked. All right, so hopefully with this quick little tree study, you can see how I have managed to develop a wide range of different green hues and also green values. So I ended up with a tree that has dimension to it, that looks relatively believable, and that has an interesting use of color as well. All right, you guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. I really hope that you found some helpful nuggets in it, that you found it inspiring, and if you did, pretty, pretty please, I'd super appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up and share with family or friends who you think would find it helpful as well. That really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and allows others to get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe so that I can see you next week for another video and keep on creating. Bye guys.